Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts, we're driving a 1973 Mercedes-Benz 450 SEL. It packs a four and a half liter naturally aspirated fuel injected V8 made into a three speed automatic driving the rear wheels. This limousine, the W116, marks a really great step forward in technology for Mercedes-Benz and really dictates the style that the company took over for quite a long time thereafter. It has independent double wishbone rear suspension. It's got four wheel disc brakes and the W116, not this one, later on became the first production car with ABS, four wheel ABS. So they definitely were making big strides in tech. But the crazy thing about this car is despite being from 1973, it still drives like a gorgeous limousine today. 1973 marks the first year that this four and a half liter V8 was used in the W116 chassis. So the M117 makes its debut in this car right here. And because it's a US spec car, we don't get the solid headlights. Normally in Europe, this would all be just flush, but we have to have these double beams. And then of course, because in 1971, Congress passed laws saying they had to have five mile per hour impact bumpers, meaning that if you hit something at five miles per hour, it wouldn't do any damage to the car. Bumper design got really strange in the early 70s. And by 1973, all cars sold in the US had to adhere to that law. So that's why we get some really strange stuff in this time period. But this one is especially weird because you essentially have a double bumper in the front and rear. I suppose that just distributes the load a bit and maybe protects this metal right here. Gluing this limo to the road are 215.75 R14 tires. 14 inch wheels with a 215 millimeter section. This is certainly not designed to get around a corner with any gusto. There's no question that it's a limousine. This wheelbase is outrageous and the length of the car makes it pretty hard to park in the city. You definitely are just parking with a valet or pulling up to the hotel and picking up your guests. I can even fit a Fiat 500 essentially between the front and rear wheels. But let me show you around the car. First, we'll start with the trunk. Pretty simple, plenty of space, and there's a bit of an elevated deck here because we do have a spare wheel and tire in the event that one of your balloons pops. And as we walk up to the rear of the car, I love how you see all the little creases. There's so many details in this car to give it an elegant vibe. And then when we hop in the rear, this door is so large. Look at the size of this. There's plenty of room for anyone to very gracefully get in and out. And once you're in the cabin, we've got tons of legroom. We've got beautiful leather upholstery everywhere. And we have an armrest. But unlike that diesel W114 or 115 that we drove, this actually does hinge on the bottom. A lot easier to put back. Up front, this is where the magic happens. A very elegant but simple design up here. We've got our HVAC controls, which are definitely dated. That looks extremely 70s. But we do have a Becker Grand Prix stereo. That looks really cool. And when we close the door... We actually have a little bit of shielding right here. So it has a bit of a Rolls Royce vibe to it. Of course, we've got to have our ashtray because naturally it's 1973, probably heavy smokers. But before we go for a drive, let me show you this power plant. To open the hood on the old Benz, we pop this up just a little bit. And then on the sides here and here, we've got a tab on the left and right. We pull those and up we go with the big garage door springs over here. Now this one was obviously a bit of a driver, but someone took enough care of it that they kept it in running condition. Certainly not a stunner, but man, does it drive well. So let's fire it up and take it out for a drive. Closes like a bank vault. First things first, the noises of the bends. We gotta love the buzzing. And when we start the car and put it in gear, that buzzing is also going to warn me that I don't have my seatbelt on. Now it's just telling me the door is open. And it is the exact same sound as Jim Carrey doing the most annoying sound in the world in Dumb and Dumber. And now I'm thinking, wait a minute, was that actually what that sound was based on? Jumps right to life. And listen, we'll put it in drive, no seatbelt. There it is again. And you'll notice it's not lurching forward like the SLs that I've driven on the channel. You can adjust the transmission for how much it lurches when you put it in gear. 
One of the first quirky things I always notice about these is how fast they go in reverse with no throttle. I'm just gonna lift off the brake. And you're off. Reverse is a really bizarrely tall gear. And I always feel like Mercedes have this strange obsession with a fast reverse gear. And we'll try not to hit these savage geese on our way out. Excuse me, Mark. Excuse me, Jack. Let's see how she does from a dig. I don't think we're going to get to 60 on that run. But you notice it's shifting early. It's possible that because I'm in D mode and not S mode, mode seems like a weird word to use for 1973, that it's not giving me that full power. So let's try this again. There we go. Still shifting at 4,000 RPM. I suppose that's just how it's tuned. But the purpose of the 450 SEL is obviously not straight line speed. Later on, they came up with a 6.9 liter version of the car, the 450 SEL 6.9, pretty obvious. That car was quite a bit faster. This car is more about luxury, comfort, and advanced suspension to keep you glued to the road. We're on a pretty ugly piece of pavement right now. Normally, I don't show this part because it's boring and it's bumpy and no one wants to watch me drive a GT2 or a Ferrari over crummy pavement. But in this, it's kind of its party trick. It's kind of the thing it does best. Despite a fairly large wheelbase, it still handles pretty well in the tight stuff. I'm surprised how easy this is to drive. In most cars, I absolutely dread this speed bump. In this car, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Sweet. There's a little bit of fear in a speed bump that large when you have a wheelbase this long because I know I'm not gonna get that rear axle on at the same time as the front axle. So I don't want to beat shit, you know? <laughs> but it made it. I feel like the very inefficient German support vehicle for a cycling team in this thing. The seat is so cushy. Oh, it's not necessarily supportive side to side, but it's like I've got the sidewall of the tires, the absorbing suspension, and this seat like I'm in a, in a, in a Mack truck. All the things make sure that I don't feel very much that's happening on the road. But at the same time, still tactile like great steering you got to put in a little bit of input but it's really intuitive and i can feel what's going on with the front of the car quite a bit of body roll but that's part of the charm hustling a boat let's test out this horn <laughs> how she handles an off-ramp.
surprisingly confident. Fast, it is not. But I'm not afraid of it. I can tell where the edge of grip is gonna be. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen anyone hustle one of these before. That was really fun. It may not look that fast on camera because it isn't frankly that fast, but I'll tell you, I don't really wanna be squealing tires in this thing. But I do imagine if it does go sideways, you've got great entertainment factor to hang the super long tail out. Yes. Oh, this is good. This is fun. I love a Luxo barge. Let's check out the turning radius on this thing. Oh, that's pretty legit. Look at this. That's fantastic. This is great. That's what you want for your limousine because you're gonna need to be navigating some pretty tight stuff in these cities, especially as a European limousine. Now I do say, whenever I see one of these, I expect Lucille Bluth from Arrested Development to be driving nine miles an hour with a fresh martini with two olives in her hand. I don't condone that, don't drink and drive, but that is certainly the vibe this thing gives off. Just to and from the country club. Beautiful day. Sometimes you drive old cars, they don't give you a lot of confidence. You don't feel like you want to log them around. You don't feel like you want to go even the speed limit because you don't trust the brakes or you don't feel like it's going to maneuver the way you'd like it to. This car, legitimately, anyone could jump into this vehicle and drive it normally today. You could give a new driver this vehicle and as long as they don't clip something when they take a, a, a turn too tightly, they'll be just fine. It operates like a car. That speaks volumes to what Mercedes was doing back in the 70s because that means that this basically operates sort of like a modern car today. Now, sure, we don't have any touch screens or interesting things here. We've got an old Becker stereo and a normal HVAC system, but this still feels like a luxury car, and that says something. I was just talking to a friend about how an E46 M3 used to be a fast car. It's not a fast car anymore. You get in it and it's like kind of a normal car. It drives well, it's well upholstered. It's got a neat, nice character to the engine, but by no means by today's standards does it feel like a fast car. This 1973 Benz still feels like a luxury car.
this hood is so long and it's wild because you're basically looking all the way down to that silver arrow, which is kind of fun. You just point that emblem where you want to go. The steering wheel is enormous and it's weighted really well. It's not too light. I definitely have to put some effort into it, but it's not cumbersome. A lot of times with cars, you've got to have the latest and greatest to look prestigious. I think you could still pull into that country club today in this W116 and look classy and sophisticated despite it not being the newest $200,000 S-Class. On the highway, it tracks wicked straight. This is awesome. And it just drives like a dream. It's got the chops, it's got the torque to get out of its own way. Very comfortable. We're kind of undulating over the bumps a little bit. But I could see myself spending a lot of miles in one of these. See how she does, about 70. Bit of wind noise, but nothing crazy. It is a bit of a brick under 3,000 RPM. Yeah, this is a happy kid. Here's a modern long wheelbase vehicle, the Audi A8L. And this is kind of the grandfather to all that stuff. This is awesome. Look at this, he's just texting and driving like a wiener. I'm gonna go hustle this thing back to Bond Group in Waltham, Massachusetts. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and coming along for a nostalgic drive in the Mercedes W116 fitted with a four and a half liter V8. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. There's so much visibility out of this thing. I'm a little hesitant to really chuck it, just because if it understeers, this is a lot to manage.